Welcome to Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. The LNER V1, Clayton Steam Lorry, a Great Western County class and a visitor from the USA. This is a part from the V1 locomotive, it's the reach rod and this connects the reversing lever to the valve gear. There's nothing wrong with it, it just needed cleaning up. And this is a spectacle plate or the front of the cab of the V1. This also needed cleaning up but I did use the bead blaster to remove the paint first. And in this clip I'm just finishing off the job using some emery cloth. When any metal parts have been cleaned in the bead blaster they come out very dusty. So it's a good idea once you've done all the rubbing down to clean the part with some panel wipe. And this panel wipe evaporates very quickly. It allows you to clean off the debris from the surface and then it immediately evaporates. And if you look at this clip where the light is exactly where I need it to be, you will notice how good the finish is on the running boards. And that's why it's good to use panel wipe before you spray the component. This is the left hand cylinder. The paint was badly damaged and I rubbed it down, then I used panel wipe to get rid of any debris, then I continued to clean up the unpainted parts as well. This panel wipe is a very good degreaser too. Then I painted the cylinder with two coats of etch primer, a very thin coat first and then a slightly thicker coat second. But I don't like the finish, it's not good at all. Even though I rubbed down the old paint with a couple of pieces of wet or dry sandpaper of different grades, when I come to paint it, it looks terrible. And I do think that the etch primer is reacting with the paint underneath as well. So I don't have any choice now but to let this etch primer dry. I could wipe it off with cellulose thinners but then I may get some on the other paint. So while the etch primer was drying I turned the engine round and I removed the paint from the other side. And to remove the paint I'm using a small piece of tool steel. I can't say this is the best method of removing old paint but it's certainly quick. But you do have to be careful that the tool steel doesn't dig into the steel of the cladding on the cylinder. The tool steel removed about 99% of the paint. I used some sandpaper to remove the rest. Followed by some panel wipe to remove the debris and now I'm painting the cylinder. And as you can see in this clip, the paint is looking much better, much smoother altogether. When brush painting like this, I generally use a small brush and I do this so that any remaining brush marks will be very, very small. After finishing painting this cylinder, I turned around the engine and painted the other cylinder after first removing all of the paint that I put on earlier. So what's John doing? Well, John and Dave have just put this boiler onto Little Bear. This is a major restoration and it's taken quite a long time, but it's worth doing because this engine was made in 1912. Yes, that's right, 1912, before World War I and in the same year that the Titanic sank. This is the new welded steel boiler and it's to replace the old copper one. And I said to John, what's all the holes around the end of it? And John explained that as the original boiler was riveted using copper rivets, he thought it would be a good idea to put some rivets around the edge of this one, just for cosmetic purposes. After about an hour, the etch primer had dried thoroughly, so it's time to put the top coat on. I'm using the satin black, the HMG satin black that we use at the steam workshop. This is very good quality paint, and you can spray it or you can brush it. What I've done here is just sprayed some from the aerosol can into the cap and there's just enough in there to allow me to paint both sides of the cylinder cladding. As the paint is still wet it looks very shiny but soon it will look the same as the running boards. Satin black, not gloss black. Dave who works at the steam workshop full time does most of the painting but I like to clean up the parts where possible before he gets them. In this clip I'm cleaning up the smoke box. I'm removing the paint where it's rusty underneath. The smoke box will be sprayed with heat resistant paint. And in the time it took to clean up the smoke box, the paint on the cylinder cladding is drying nicely and starting to match the running boards. Here are some of the newly painted parts that Dave put on my bench after being painted, and these have been done using gloss paint. On the bench next to me, there is a young man working on a Clayton steam lorry. And I think there's something wrong with him. He's come all the way from Hudson in New Hampshire in the USA to work on steam engines at the steam workshop for a week. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if it was for a month, but it seems a long way to come just to work on steam engines for a week. Now that's what you call true dedication. The first job he was given to do was to check this boiler on a Clayton steam lorry and prepare it for a hydraulic test. He took off the front and the entire cab and that exposed the boiler, so it made it very easy to have a look at the boiler in detail. But unfortunately, Upon closer inspection, the boiler was unfit for service. 
It looked to me like in a previous steaming the water level had been allowed to get too low and the inner firebox had collapsed. So after that, Simon gave him this locomotive to do. Now this locomotive is a real pain. The problem is, it needs a hydraulic boiler test. But the regulator leaks so badly that all the water runs out of the cylinders. And in this clip, I'm helping Phil to remove the phosphor bronze bolts that hold the regulator gland fitting to the backhead. It took quite a while, and it was difficult, to say the least. Here's Phil making a gasket with a hole punch. And that's it for this series of Depression at the Steam Workshop. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Phil had a great deal of patience. This was a very fiddly job. Here's the valve. It's very tiny, and it fits right down inside a tube, and it needs lapping. So he's using this tool in order to lap it to the port face. And the entire job took about three and a half hours. It was a very long job. It was difficult getting the fitting out to start with. And by the state of the fitting that we carefully took out of the boiler, someone in the past had used a screwdriver to lever it out. So John expertly remachined it, and as you can see here, it's just like a new fitting. After Phil fitted the gasket and put all the screws back in, it was time to refit the regulator arm, and this was difficult to the end. The arm would not go on the shaft, and I don't know why, we just tapped it on very gently. And once Phil fitted the nut on the end, the job was finished. It just remains to be seen whether it was successful. And that's it from me for the moment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.